گفت اگر من گفتمی رمزی ازان زهری تو آب گشتی آن زمان He says, if I'd even given you a hint of what I was doing, uh, your gallbladder would instantly have turned into water because you would have been so terrified. If I told you what that snake was like, you would have been so frightened that you would have died. Mustafa farmod eger goyam be rast شرح آن دشمن که در جان شماست زهر های پر دیلان هم بر درد نه رواد را نه غم کاری خورد The Holy Prophet said, Mustafa said, If I was to tell you correctly the description of the enemy which is in your own selves, even the gallbladders of heroes would burst. Such a person would neither be able to walk nor return to work. نه دلش را تا بماند در نیاز نه تنش را قوت روزی و نماز روزه و نماز Neither would he have the strength even to continue praying nor would he have the strength to continue fasting and the namaz همچو موشی پیش گربه لا شود همچو بر پیش گرک از جای و رود he would become so useless that he'd be like a mouse hypnotized by a cat, unable to move. He would be as terrified as a lamb confronted by a wolf. Uh, so, andar o ne hile manad na ravash pas konam na gufte tan man par varash such a person would be so terrified that he would not be able to make any plans or even move. And that is why I treated you without speaking. I am silent, like Abu Bakr Rababi. I handle the iron like David. And Abu Bakr Rababi was somebody, a uh, well-known musician who used to be a disciple of Rumi who is said to be such a great musician that uh, just the sound of his music, even without words, would make people weep. The quality of great traditional musicians in the Near East, like Farabi is said to have been such a great lutenist that he could make people cry or laugh just from his music. Uh, so, And even silence sometimes with a great musician in this, this tradition is said to be enough to get people into great musical state. So he's a great Rabab, uh, great Rabab player. And Dawood, of course, famous for his singing and just the beauty of the voice of Sayyidina Dawood salam, was enough to promote, to, to provoke repentance even without listening to the actual, actual words. Um, so yes, he, he, he proceeds uh, خود بدانی چون بر آره سر زخاب ختم شد ختم شد و الله اعلم و بی صواب How is it possible to explain the actions of the divine or the actions of prophetic wisdom or saintly wisdom to people who are in the state of, of sleep? How is it possible to assess or to predict or to interpret the love that ensues when people see what the work of prophecy is really about, taking them out of their lower selves into a kind of garden, a paradise uh, in the spirit? How is it possible to explain that? He says, when you raise your head, sar hmm, azhab, from this sleep that you're in, that's when you'll understand it. That's it, and Allah knows best uh, what is right. In other words, he's now closing with the image of sleep and wakefulness, that the person who is in the grip of this lower eye is actually in a state of false consciousness. He's not really using his inward faculties in the way that they're designed. 
is doing something one-eyed and uh, abusive. Whether or not he takes himself to be doing it in the name of ostensive religion is not really the point. If ultimately he is a donkey and he sees things with the donkey's eye instead of being like the, the, the honeybee, Zanbore Asal, then he is in the state of false consciousness, he is in the state of slumber and sleep. And this idea of the Khabi Raflat, the sleep of heedlessness, is again an axiom for Mevlana. That is our condition. We are Niyam. We are, we are Niyam. We are sleeping. We are not fully alert. We are not fully awake. We are in a kind of somnambulant condition, not fully present in the moment, daydreaming about the past, fantasizing about the future, not being Ibn al waqt not being in the state of true darwishi, which is sort of being so detached from material pleasures that we're actually fully in the moment and belonging to the moment, that the forms of the world take us away from the world, uh, and an indifference to the sensual possibilities of the things that are out there, except in what is halal and therefore settles the soul rather than agitates it. A detachment actually makes us more in the world, and this is why we speak of uh, the virtue of Khalwat Dar Anjuman, solitude in the crowd, which is a semi permanent uh, state in the, 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 the world of the Tariqat, which is that because you are in the crowd, but not in terms of the usual jostling of egos, but only scanning for what is beautiful and scanning for opportunities to be of service, you are, as it were, a stranger in that crowd, uh, but you are still part of the crowd. You're still Bani Adam, but you are a kind of ruby amongst the rocks. And this is how the Anbiya were, alayhim was salam. This is how the awliya are required to be. This is how the real person who has surrendered to Allah, the true Muslim, is supposed to be. That in whatever situation he finds himself <coughs> with human beings, whether they're believers or unbelievers or saints or sinners, he knows there's always good things there that he can identify and focus on. <coughs> And he knows there's always things that he can be doing for those people, and he'll be scanning for that in every situation. And by doing so, he actually belongs to the situation more fully than the person who is in a state of denial and denigration and despite. If you are with people, and your instinct is to be kind of critical of them, you're not actually with them. But when you're with them at the same physical distance, maybe in the same social situation, and you're looking for ways to be of service to them, and looking for the correct adab in that situation, you're really very close. You are in a huddle with them. And this is why, in the context of married love, physical togetherness is only a kind of outward image for the, for the inward togetherness that comes from the, the mutual status of libas. And there's a deep, deep wisdom in this. That's one aspect of the sign I mean, ayatihi an khalaqa lakum min anfusikum azwaja. One of his signs is that he created spouses for you from amongst yourselves so that you can experience the, the wonderment of being drawn out of your own selfishness in the service of somebody else and acknowledging the, 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 the karama that Allah has placed in the other. That is also a path of spiritual transformation. So the, the lesson of all of this really is to uh, remember that in whatever circumstance we might find ourselves, we are never off the hook. We can never be on holiday from this fundamental human uh, need to get rid of the snake within, at least acknowledge that we have it, and probably not just the seven deadly sins, but a whole bunch of snakes within ourselves, to be aware that we are carrying that rubbish around within us. And as Mevlana says, to get into a, a, a spiritual zone where we are with people and truly with them. In other words, we actually recognize their value, we recognize their humanity, we recognize their needs, and we find our sa'ada, our happiness, in spotting their needs and seeing if there's anything anybody could do for those people. Or if all they need is, as the Holy Prophet says, wajin taliq, you know, a smiling face or some kind of positive human interaction, that we give them that form of nourishment in that situation. And places like this, are always uh, important in our civilization in that they represent a kind of laboratory where this takes place in an intensified form, where the adab and the, the quality of human relations are the subject of a very fine focus at the hands of the sheikh, at the hands of his assistants. The, the, the dervishes are on the safinat nur, they're traveling together. Uh, 
in order to experience the joy of true human fellowship, the happiness that the Sahaba radiallahu anhum had amongst themselves was partly due to the fact that they had been liberated from the suspiciousness and the tribalism and the false divisions imposed by the jahiliyyah and found themselves ibadullahi ikhwana, as Allah's servants, as brothers, which is a wonderful experience for any human being. So happiness is what we all seek. Let us find true happiness in Mevlana's vision of recognizing the demon within and loving those, whoever they may be, even if they're not teachers, but anybody whose presence with us gives us opportunities not just to obey the snake, but to open the eye of the heart. Let's be grateful for those people uh, because this is a way of mu'amala. Our religion is the way of engaging with others. It's only through engaging with others that we can hope to, to be transformed. If we're on our, our own, we're on our own, but with ourselves, which is usually pretty bad company. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, inshallah, open our hearts and open the hearts of the ummah to this teaching and to give us uh, something of the reality as well as the words of the Masnavi of, of Mevlana Rumi and inshallah to make us people who are devoted to the text, regularly consult it, spread it inshallah and internalize this meaning which is that we'll only find our true happiness and sa'adat inshallah in the Dharain, in the dunya and the akhirah through this idea of looking for others, looking out for others, uh, looking after others, uh, and putting the self number one last. This is the Sabila Sa'adat. Barakallahu feekum, wal afu minkum, wa salamu alaykum wa rahmatullah.